Hi, I'm Megan Dugan. I am with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, and we're here in Newport on board the research vessel named the Pacific Surveyor, and I'm here with my colleague. I'm Leif Rasmussen. I run the Marine Fisheries Research Project out here in Newport. So what's going on out here today, Leif? So we're getting ready. We're mobilizing this boat to head out and do the state of Oregon's first uh, statewide black rockfish survey. And why are we surveying rockfish? So black rockfish are really the bread and butter of our recreational um, ocean fishing fleet. And so, you know, if you've ever been out on a charter fishing boat when you came out to the coast to visit or something, that's probably what you were fishing for. And so these fish are just incredibly important to the fishery. Um, and so we have a little bit of uncertainty about how big the population is. And so we're going out to use some fancy tools to try and count them and try and give, uh, reduce that uncertainty so we can do a jo better job managing the fishery. All right. And so we're on the boat. There's a lot of action going on. What, what's going on here today as far as the yeah. crew's getting ready? Yeah, so we're in the process of mobilizing. So, um, you know, we're going to be out to sea. So we're starting at the Washington border. Um, we're leaving, it sounds like, either Friday or Saturday. I was just talking to the captain about that. We're not quite sure. We're figuring all these things, all these little logistics to consider in there. And so we're going to leave Friday or Saturday morning. Um, and then we're going to um, head up to the Washington border and start working our way south um, all the way to California. So we're going to be out at sea for about 50 days. So we have a whole lot of stuff we got to take on board. Um, so we're out here. We've got four crew from the um, ship or the boat that are going to be working with us and then four scientists that will be changing in and out every week or so. Okay. All right. And you guys are living on board. You're at sea for yep. several months. You put your life on hold. Yep, to do yep. science. Everyone puts their life on hold. We come out. Like I said, we do one or two legs. So a leg, we call them a leg. They're about seven or eight days. So people are at sea for seven to 14 days. Um, it's a great boat. This is a really wonderful research platform. But for eight people, you know, it's tight. We're all going to be really, really good friends at the end. <laughs> um, I think it's really the only way you can go with that. Um, and so, yeah, this is you know, where we'll be living and what we'll be doing. Um, so if you want, we can go over this way. I can show you kind of uh, where we're living and then the command center, and we'll kind of walk you through some of the operations that we're doing while we're out here. That's awesome. Okay, so this white box you can see over here is the um, science party sleeps down below. So we'll go over to the door so you guys can look down in, and then we'll look in the house and see the command center. So these doors here down below, it's like I said, we're mobilizing. So it's definitely a work in progress. So there's lots of stuff everywhere, but this is where the four science parties sleep. You can see there's two racks right there and then uh, racks are what we call beds on boats. And then actually right underneath the camera where the two other people are sleeping. Um, and so this is an incredibly comfortable spot to sleep. Um, you're right below the water line in the middle of the boat. So it, it actually doesn't get much better than that on a boat of a place to sleep. And so this is, the command center of the boat. Um, so it, like I said, you know, everything pretty much comes out of here. This is our galley right here. You can see our refrigerator and uh, sink. Um, we can't bring the camera in because it's a steel boat, doesn't have great service, but the little kitchenette's over here behind me. Um, and then here's all the computers that we're using when we're on the boat. Um, and so this computer over here on the left, we use a water profiler and it lets us look at where oxygen is in the water column and things like that. Um, and so it's a really important tool that we use. This um, middle monitor right here, this TV, is our navigation software. And so each of these lines is the transects that we'll be following with the boat. Um, and so this is how the captain knows where to go. It's how we know where we need to go. And we have these lines laid out. There's about 700 of them that go from Washington to the California border. This monitor also is run and goes up to the wheelhouse, which is right up above us and where the captain is. And so he can see everything that we're doing down here in real time. And we have radios so we can talk. And he knows what we need from him in a split second notice. So how many transects do you roughly do a day? So what the boat does about seven knots. So a knot is a nautical mile. So kind of like a mile per hour. Um, the, we're surveying from about an 80 meter water depth to the shore. Um, the northern coast of Oregon is a lot wider than down south. So we can do a lot more transects down south in a day than we can up north just because we take time to just drive that transect. It's just a lot of driving is what we're doing. And so 
Um, up north, we're going to do a lot fewer transects in a day. But there's also fewer rocky reefs, and we have a heavier number of transects on rocky reefs, so we also get slowed down. So usually 20 to 30 transects in a day, but um, like I said, we're also doing video camera drops, and we're doing uh, some hook and line sampling. So um, there's other things going on during the day that slow things down. And back in the office, you were telling us that these transects are kind of in a Z. Yeah, so the main transects that we're using are the transects that are basically perpendicular to the shoreline. And here, I don't know if the colors are showing up, we have these black lines right here and these purple lines. And so those, this is a zigzag design. And so what we do is, those are the zigs, they're the main transects we're using. That's where we do our video drops, where we do um, our uh, fishing and things like that. But those kind of cross over those angular transect lines in some ways of analyzing data, you can use those data. And so rather than just not collect data as we drive from one thing to another, we're collecting that data. And if we go with that kind of methodology, then we actually have some more ability to do more with the data. Basically, boats are expensive. Having people on a boat is you know, exhausting. We want to get as much bang for our buck as we can. We want to make this the best thing we can for the number of hours we have to be on the water. So awesome. that's why we're doing those extra little angles there. OK, thanks. Yeah. And so here's our acoustics over here. So this is just like the fish finder you use on your boat when you're out fishing. And so um, it's just different in that it's on a giant monitor, one, so that we can see it a little better, but also it saves it to a hard drive. And so when I have it on a hard drive, I can take it back to my office and I can do a bunch of analyses with it. And so with a fish finder, if I know what species of fish are that school of fish is made up of and how long those fish are, I can actually take the fish finder data do some math with those two things and tell you how many fish there are. And so we're sitting here, someone sits in this chair all day, every day, and they look up at this monitor, and whenever they say a school of fish, they tell the person who's sitting over here running the TV with the navigation right here, hey, there's a school of fish, make a mark. And then they radio up to the captain and they say, all right, Al, he's the name of our captain, we want to do a video drop. We spin the boat around, we go, we drop our camera for two minutes, we pick it back up, and then we get back on our transect and keep going. Um, and just after we finish in here, I'll go show you guys the camera. It's a really neat design we have. And then while we're out, we um, actually record all of our data in real time into this database computer that's right here. And so rather than using data sheets, which can just get all over the place and things like that, everything goes into this one central location in real time. And it just makes it much cleaner, easier when we get back. We don't have to try and enter everything, try and remember, oh, what's going? I notoriously have horrible handwriting. My crew really hates reading anything I write. This way they don't have to deal with that. This makes them extremely happy, things like that. So um, this is just a wonderful asset that we have. Um, and then we've actually set it up so we can actually send this database out to the back deck right behind the camera. And so if we need to run this on the back deck while somebody's out there running a camera or doing something, you can communicate and run this equipment from another place on the boat. You run from the wheelhouse. So we have this ability to kind of bounce around if we need to, to be talking to different people. Um, and down here through this stairwell is where the crew sleeps. Our engine room is down here. And then our shower and bathroom combo is down there as well. And so, like I said, this is our command center. This is kind of where the main area where we're living during the day. Um, and so, again, it's an acoustic survey, but I need that camera data. So let's go take a look at this camera out here. And we'll um, go over kind of how it works and what it does. So this is the camera system that we use. Um, this was designed by my colleague, Matt Bloom. This is a really cool design that's designed specifically to look at the black rockfish. So black rockfish don't live right on the bottom like yellow eye or some of those other rockfish. They're up in the water column, what we call semi-pelagic. And so this camera is attached to this 40 pound piece of iron with a two meter long rope. And it floats up off the bottom and orients it looking into the current. And then what we have is we have two GoPros right here that look um, straight out, but they kind of are angled in towards each other. And so by looking at the same thing with two cameras at a slight angle, it's called stereo vision. And with stereo vision, we can actually measure fish. And so we use special software when we get back to the office and we click on the nose and the tail of every fish we see um, on both cameras, the left and the right. And then I can say, oh, that's a 31 centimeter black rock fish that was you know, two and a half meters from the camera. It was above the horizontal plane and oriented like this. So we can do all this cool stuff with those two cameras. That's fascinating. Um, and then also acoustics kind of struggle sometimes to tell what's the bottom and what's a fish right on the bottom. 
And so rockfish, you know, a lot of species live right down on the bottom. So we want to make sure that we're not missing them. You know, the last thing we want to do when we're counting fish is to use a tool that misses a good chunk of the population. So we want to make sure, again, we're not missing, missing them. So what we do is we have this camera that points down at the bottom. It's angled downward, and we call it our down camera, nicely. And what it does is it tells us, okay, in the fish that are right near the bottom, what's called the acoustic dead zone, how many fish are down there? And by using that, I can actually correct the acoustics and make sure that we're not missing those fish in our numbers that we're getting. Wow. Um, and so then these orange things are the floats that keep it upright. We have all these um, LED lights um, to help us be able to see. It's quite dark down in the ocean, surprisingly. How, um, uh, how deep are you going? So we, the deepest that we're going on a transect is 80 meters. So the deepest we would ever drop this is um, 80 meters. Um, every piece of equipment on here is rated to uh, usually I think about 500. These lights might only be 100 meters, but other than that, everything else can go much deeper. But black rockfish, which is a really our focus, we are going to count blue and deacon rockfish as well, but our main focus is blacks. The bulk, I would say 99% of the population lives inside of that 80 meter depth. So we're surveying where the fish are. The last thing we want to do is go out and do a whole bunch of surveys where the fish aren't. Um, and so, yeah, we also have these two other sensors on here. This one measures how chunky the water is. Um, anyone who's a diver or looked at underwater videos, when your water's really chunky, it's hard to see things. And so this helps us calibrate how good we're doing with our video in real time. Um, and then we also have this tilt sensor, which also has uh, depth and temperature. And so if, if you envision a fish as a football, it's got a swim bladder that's like a little football inside of it. Um, and when your fish finder hits that uh, swim bladder, the little football inside, it creates a sound. But if you turn your football so the point is facing upwards, it's only going to see the point of that inside little football. And it's a very different sound. And so the way that that fish is oriented changes things. And so what's really groundbreaking about what we're doing here is normally when people do acoustic surveys, they use nets. And so they bring the fish in. They don't know how they were oriented to the water column. So they don't actually know how the acoustics saw them. We can tell you in three dimension how every fish is oriented to the water column and to that transducer. And so we can do an incredibly um, accurate correction for what they're doing out there. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And so to get that data, we actually worked with the Oregon Coast Aquarium and some colleagues at uh, NOAA. And we went and x-rayed a bunch of fish, live fish from the aquarium. And we used x-rays to build three dimensional models of their swim bladders so that we can actually have that data. So there's some pretty cool. Uh, x-rays of rockfish that I had never seen that were just really fascinating to wow. look at. Um, so yeah, so like I said, this is kind of the bread and butter of um, what we do. We use those acoustics and this camera. You put those two together, you can count fish. The one thing is, is the way we manage our fish is based on, in the state of Oregon, is based on an age structured stock assessment. And so ignoring all the difficulties of what a stock assessment is, it's an age structured, so we need to know ages. And the way we age a fish is with its ear bones. So we are doing some hook and line sampling twice a day so that we can take the ear bones out of the fish and we can age them um, as we go. And so I'll show you kind of our fish processing situation and how we collect them and things like that. Okay. So when we're out at sea, um, twice a day we're fishing. We have four people fishing and we do four drifts, um, and we use just shrimp flies, like what a recreational angler would use, and then we use herring jigs, so I can get the little tiny rockfish that are like this big. Um, and so as we catch fish, every angler will bring up their fish, and as they catch a fish, the hook on the bottom is number one, number six is on the top, and as they catch it up, that fish that's caught has to go into its little bin so that we can keep track and know, okay, uh, you know, Joe caught on hook one a black rockfish right here. So we do this, we have quite a few green baskets as you can see so we have all these things they go in and they get stacked up and then we bring them over to this fish processing table that we have right here. Um, so what we have is a length board but unlike a lot of your standard scientific length boards we're using a Bluetooth based length board and so we have a magnet that we use you put your fish down you place this on the tail or right next to the tail and it sends the data to our database. Then we can move it over to our scale and so Although we manage fish based on their age, their, their, how much we're allowed to take and harvest in a year on a big scale is based on poundage. And so we need to know the relationship between how long you are and how much you weigh. And that changes based on the quality of a year and things like that. So this scale is how we measure every single fish independently. This is what's called a motion compensating scale. When you're on the ocean, the boat's rocking and rolling like that. 
Um, this scale allows us to compensate for that so that we can take that motion of the ocean out of the way and that our fish numbers are right. Push a button, this goes to the database. Um, and then normally this area right here has a whole bunch of knives and things like that that we use to cut the heads. We take the otoliths, they go into jars, we use barcode scanners and things like that to send them out. So this is kind of the other big part of what we're doing. And um, the otolith is the ear, ear bone. bone. Yes. Okay. Um, and so we were talking about the acoustics, this big canoe and this steel pole you see here, the transducers live inside of that. And so we use the cranes up above to lower that up and down as we are using it. Okay. Um, yeah. And you uh, also are going to have a small boat on board. Yeah. So you can see there's uh, bunks like you would see on a boat trailer and then the hauler here. So down on the southern Oregon coast near Port Orford and stuff, you have all sorts of wash rocks and things like that. And anybody who's fished down there recreationally knows those rockfish are uptight in those areas. This boat that we're standing on the Pacific Survey is a little bit too big to get into a lot of those areas, but we don't want to not survey where the fleet fish is, where we know the fish are. So what we're going to do is when we get down there, we have a whole nother acoustic setup, the database, another camera system that goes on that little boat. We lift and crane this 19 foot little fiberglass boat off of this one. And then we go and we do the survey in and amongst those little wash rocks and things like that. And so that way we can make sure we don't miss any of those fish in tight. Okay. Um, so yeah, like I said, a big part of what we're doing is we just want to make sure we survey where all the fish are. We don't want to miss any areas, things like that. So is the little boat going to be on this big boat the whole time you're surveying? No, we'll put the little boat on when we get down to Charleston. Okay. We don't really need it from uh, basically Astoria down to about Port Orford. Um, and so the, if you had a boat right here, there's a whole lot of space lost. And yes. so we already have eight people on board. We're trying to have as much space as we can okay. when we're going. Um, so. And how big is this boat? This boat is 56 feet that we're on right now. Right. Um, it's a, what's called a combination boat. And so, yeah, it's, it's a great converted fishing boat as part of the buyback program. Um, it's a steel trawler. So yeah, it's a great boat. Um, anybody doing research, they're definitely a good crew to work with. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, and then one last kind of tool that we use. Um, so this is uh, CTD, which stands for conductivity, temperature, and depth. Conductivity is a fancy word that we use for salinity. We measure it based on uh, electricity. And so using this, we can look at that water column profile and things like that. Um, there's been a lot of focus on ocean acidification, hypoxia, things like that. Um, we can measure what the dissolved oxygen levels are, and we'll get a whole map of Oregon's near shore of what oxygen levels are like, temperature, things like that, which will give us a really nice, uh, beautiful picture of kind of what the ocean's like as we're doing this project. So a nice addition that helps us with our acoustics, but also just helps the general science and conservation that the agency is trying to do. Yeah, that's excellent. So the, the survey is focused on rockfish, but uh -huh. while you're out here spending several thousand dollars a day on this boat, you're also collecting other information that's going to help advance science for ocean acidification and hypoxia. Yeah, um, and the acoustics, we actually can uh, bottom type as we're going, so we'll have a hard and soft. We have pretty good maps in the state of Oregon, but we actually are going to basically be mapping all of Oregon's nearshore waters as we go in real time, so we'll get all sorts of data out of that. Every fish that we catch gets counted and measured. Every fish that we see in the camera gets counted and measured. So we get a whole lot of data. Um, you know, squid fishing has become an interesting new thing. We see squid on the acoustics, so we'll get a little bit of data there. Probably not enough for a survey or anything, but there will be a lot of information in there. So that's excellent. A whole lot of cool things coming out of it. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's kind of the best tour that. Um, we have of the boat and stuff, so. All right, yeah. well, thanks for your time, Leaf, and uh, we all wish you and your crew well on your voyage. Sounds good, thank thanks. you very much. All right, bye-bye.